This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. Welcome to the monthly public lecture of the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. Thank you all for coming. The Vegetarian Society of Hawaii is a not-for-profit volunteer organization founded in 1990 to promote human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of vegetarian education. It's among the largest vegetarian societies in the nation. Um, is anyone here tonight for the first time? Okay, we got a few. Great. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, that's to celebrate your coming. <laughs> it is now time for our special guests. We're delighted to have with us tonight Brooke and Home Le Amohala. The, the Le Amohalas are the co founders of the Optimum Living Alliance, a 501c3 community outreach and educational organization. Brooke is the co author of incredibly delicious recipes for a new paradigm with over 500 vegan recipes from beginning to gourmet. She is also the founder of Mama Earth Cafe, an organic vegan catering service. Home and Brooke are new parents of a beautiful nine-month-old son who will be presenting with them. Koa is nine months to the old today. Koa has been vegan since long before his conception and will be brought up uh, eating a vegan diet. Brooke has been vegan for over 15 years and was 100% vegan throughout her pregnancy. Holm has been vegan for 12 years. Please welcome Brooke and Holm Leamohala. Aloha. Thank you for being here. My name is Brooke. This is my husband, Home Leo Mohala. And our beautiful son, Koa, is way in the back, <laughs> under the table, <laughs> crawling around and having a great time. <laughs> You'll learn more about us as this evening blossoms. But to start off with, we'd like to offer a quick song that touches upon some of the maladies that are in the world today and offers a solution. It's a little song called Go Vegan. Cancer's pretty scary, heart attacks too. High blood pressure and cholesterol are bad for you. We can live in fear and worry that our dying day is near. Or melt away those silly threats and grin from ear to ear. We watch meat eating diseases, it surely seems like fate. Until we understand that they've all made the same mistake. Poisoning their bodies with things that don't belong. Which is why it's time to sing this very healthy song. There's never been a better time. Don't need any other reason to go vegan. Rainforests are disappearing, the ocean life too. Our topsoil is diminishing day by day. Fresh water is depleting, global warming is getting worse. Extinction is running rampant, now we feel like our own curse. Did you know? That the water to make one pound of chicken can be for two months. One pound of pork four months and beef an entire year. We can spare ourselves and children from the cause of all this waste by switching to the habits that brighten every day. There's never been a better time. 
you don't need any other reason to go vegan. Your children and grandchildren will thank you all so much for having the good sense to make a change. And for showing them the importance of minding your own health and helping ensure the planet's health remains. And for giving them an example with crystal clarity of sparing God's innocent children from a fate that need not be. You see, mutilation is ugly, murder is too. Being skinned alive is quite obscene. It's easy to let it happen if you don't have to see. You can pretend it doesn't matter because you don't hear their screams. Mothers crying for their babies, babies crying for their lives. It's a terrible crime to pay someone for someone else's life. And the saddest part is it's needless. Eating them does us no good. Which is why it's simply practical and easily understood. There's never been a better time. You don't need any other reason. There's never been a better place. It's easier than ever to begin. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to meet our beautiful vegan son over here. <laughs> this is Koa. This is Koa. He has been vegan since since way before conception. Look go. at these look at these chubs. <laughs> Koa. <laughs> <laughs> I have been vegan for 15 years and have prepared food throughout that time, focusing on raw vegan food as well as whole food vegan cooking. I have established a personal chef and catering service called Mama Earth Cafe. And the goal and the mission of Mama Earth Cafe is to incorporate excellent health with excellent taste. So you don't have to skimp out on anything. We use the highest quality organic ingredients in all of our food that we prepare. And we also really love to work with the local organic farmers as much as we can. So just really trying to push and support the local organic farmers. <laughs> I have also co-authored a cookbook called Incredibly Delicious. And if you want some good recipes for the holidays that are healthy for you as well, that book is filled with them. It's got sweet cranberry bread and pumpkin bread and, and cashew gravy, the same cashew gravy we're making tonight, and carrot cake and pumpkin pie and desserts and sauces and Alfredo pasta and pizzas. Every, <laughs> lots of things are in there. And it's from beginning to gourmet, so hopefully it'll, it'll uh, reach everybody. And there's a little quote at the bottom of each page that lifts the spirit gives uh, some idea of what's what. And so tonight I will be sharing with you some well-seasoned tips on how to incorporate health into good tasting food. And we are going to start with, did everybody get a, a handout, a little recipe packet? Great. And we're going to start with um, fresh Ono almond milk. Nut milks are the base of, of good vegan cooking one of the bases of it. And I, I think I'm going to need two hands. So, so it's kind so. of short on the thing. Like yeah. So. That off. Okay, so we're going to start with fresh Ono almond milk. And nut milks, there's, you can make milk out of many different things. Almond, actually sprouted almond is my favorite milk. Okay, so fresh Ono almond milk. I'm actually going to grab this measuring cup. 
Yeah, nut milks are great. They are an amazing base. You can make amazing things with nut milks. Tonight you're going to see um, a gravy. We're going to make a cashew gravy out of basically a nut milk. So, and then an almond. Now, if you can take your, like, like one thing, if you buy milk, you know, or even the, the canned or, or cartoned nut milks and soy milks and things like that, if you can take... It's, it only takes five minutes to make your own nut milk, and it lasts three to four days in the fridge. And it's delicious, and it just adds that extra over-the-top nutrition as well. It's good. Almonds have vitamin E in them, and when you soak them, they, they actually become even, even more easily digestible. So, yeah, almonds. Almond milk, sprouted almond milk is one of my favorites. So, we're just going to do a little quick presentation. My favorite blender is the Vitamix because it's... Uh, it just blends really, really well and really quickly. <laughs> so it shortens your time. So we're going to put two, two cups of almonds in the Vitamix. And then we're going to add... Now, every time you do nut milks, <clears throat> you should just add enough water <clears throat> to cover the nuts because if you add too much water, it doesn't, doesn't break down well enough. So basically, just add enough water to cover the nuts and then blend it. And now one of the tricks, I'm going to teach you guys my, my tricks. I have a no secret policy. So unlike some chefs, <laughs> I give away all my secrets. My goal and my mission is to spread love and to spread good health and to, to help save the world. So that's my mission. So all the secrets are free. <laughs> you can ask any questions. Actually, we should probably save our questions for the end. I'll be out there serving the tasters after. So anybody's welcome to come out and, and ask any questions. Yeah, so fresh. Oh, so one of, the, one of the secrets is to blend, blend, blend. So anyways, we're going to blend a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we have just, just almonds and water. Okay, so then all we have in there is almonds and water. Now, to, to soak the almonds or to sprout the almonds, I just either put them in water and leave them in water for about four hours, or you can put them in the day before and just, just soak them overnight. That's the best way. That's the way I like to do it the best. And yeah, soaked uh, or sprouted almond is my favorite. And this is a nut milk bag. This is a great kitchen tool. If, if you can get these at Down to Earth or... Mana Foods on Maui <laughs> for maybe five, six bucks, something like that. And this is an awesome kitchen tool. You can make um, really good, creamy, decadent things with a nut milk bag. <laughs> so this is just almonds and water, and we're just going to pour it right through. Now, normally in my classes, I really love to allow people to taste test as the, the different things go in, the different ingredients go in, because... I mean, I drink it just like this, just with the almonds and the water. It's like super good and super delicious and doesn't even need anything. But serving it to make it taste more like the, the nut milks that you would buy in the stores, I add a pinch of salt and a little bit of sweetener. I like to use, the, here's one, that the agave syrup or maple syrup. And that's about it. Oh, and a little dash of vanilla. So that's... Those are the little three things that you, that you add. And I usually add those after I strain out the nut milk just because they're expensive ingredients. And <laughs> I figure you probably lose a little bit in, inside the, the nut thing. So, so you kind of got to massage it just kind of like you're kneading a bread kind of. Just massage it a little bit. And you can see the milk that's coming out of there. It looks just like cow's milk, and it's a lot cleaner, <laughs> a lot healthier, <laughs> and a lot easier to get. <laughs> and it tastes really, really, really good. And I do have some fresh almond milk here, as well as some carob milk I thought I would share with everybody as well. So at the tasters outside, we will have the fresh almond milk and we'll have the carob milk. And the carob, if anybody doesn't know what carob is, it's kind of a substitute for chocolate. Chocolate sometimes is, I just use chocolate more like a enhancer or <laughs> a stimulant, you know. If I'm going out or, you know, something like that, I'll, or need to stay up, I'll have some chocolate. And, but it's a little hard on the system if you eat it all the time. It's not a good thing. It's, it can be addicting. And so carob is a really good substitute for that. It, um, it's sweet and natural, and it comes from a pod. It's a carob pod, and it's, it's healthy for you. It's actually it's gentle on the digestive system, but it also soothes the stomach as well on top of it. So 
So yeah, you'll get to try some carob milk, which is also really, really good. Okay, so we have our, and then you have all this almond pulp in here, which I usually just put in the compost. You can use it in baking if you want to throw it into something. <laughs> you can throw it into something. Oh, she asked if it was healthy to eat. And it is. It, the, the, the skin around the almonds has something, something on it. I don't know exactly what the name of it is. I don't know if it's tannins or not. But anyways, it's good to soak it and to rinse the almonds before you blend it. And then when you do it through the nut milk bag, all of that stays in the, in the bag. I mean, you can eat it too. I mean, you know, you just eat handfuls of almonds. It's not like really bad for you. I mean, you need, but it is a little poisonous in like really huge amounts. So it's nice. This way you get just, just the goodness on the inside. And then you just rinse out your blender so that it, you don't have any of the little grit in there. And then you can look at this milk as I pour this. This is really beautiful, just white and creamy. And then... So yeah, I mean, as I said, you can drink it as is or store it as is, put it on cereals and milks. You can even bake with it. One yummy thing that you can do for the holidays is turn it into a hot cocoa. Put a little dash of cocoa powder, some cocoa powder in there with a little sweetener, a little extra sweetener. And you can put a little pinch of uh, cinnamon in there for a Mexican hot chocolate. Or if you want to be really exotic, you can put a little dash of cardamom in there with a little, a little dash of cayenne and it'll turn into more of like an Indian, a spicy Indian hot chocolate, which is really fun. So we're gonna have, this is just organic vanilla, from or organic Mexican vanilla. We're gonna put a little dash of that in, and then we're gonna put a little pinch of salt. This is just sea salt. Just a little dash of sea salt. And a little dash of sweetener. Now this is organic raw blue agave sweetener. You can use maple syrup. I personally don't use honey. I haven't used honey for 15 years. Um, I just don't like the way they treat the bees. <laughs> but it's also not, not good for you too, as people have found out. So then just give it a quick little stir, if I can do this properly. And you're done. So that's it, that's, that's nut milk. That's almond milk, and it's really good. And we, oh, I have two. This is what you guys are going to taste. This is some almond milk. So it's just, it's like a gallon of milk. I mean, it's just really beautiful and, and yummy. Like white, white decadent milk. And this is the carob milk. I would love for you guys to try it right now. <laughs> but you'll have to wait till afterwards. So we have the, the fresh Ono almond milk. And the next recipe, if you look on there, is Indian cardamom chocolate bark. Now this is this is a recipe. This is this is a chocolate that I ha have pretty much everybody who tries this says, "Oh my gosh, that's the best chocolate I've ever had in my mouth, in my in my taste, in my life." Sorry, <laughs> my taste in my mouth, in my life. It actually came from I I tasted the, some some chocolate somewhere at a party, and I said, "Wow, this is the best chocolate I've ever I've ever had in my life." So I went home and I said, "What was in that? It tasted like cardamom. It tasted like ginger. It tasted like this." So I just put together my own recipe, and it's an Indian cardamom chocolate bark, some dark chocolate chips, and dried cranberries, which are known to protect the urinary tract. It's got ginger and a little tiny touch of cayenne, and some toasted cashews, cardamom, cardamom and chocolate are. That's, this, is where, <laughs> this is where they marry and they, they meet, and it's really, really yummy. And then you have a chocolate cashew cream pie, which is also really yummy. And this calls for agar agar. I was just going to show you guys, give you a little quick example of what uh, agar agar is. This is a seaweed, and it's a clear seaweed, and it's a gelatinous seaweed. And basically to use it, you just, like I would just, in the recipe here, I just say cut off two inches, um, like two and a half inches of the bottom and boil that. And once that's translucent, once it's, it looks like it's boiled, <laughs> then you just make a cashew milk, any, any kind of creamy, yummy goodness in the blender and pour that in there. And you can make cheesecakes and um, chocolate cream pies and chocolate mousse or puddings or I even make jalapeno cheese out of it by, I would, I would use a little bit more. And so you can actually make a mold and turn, turn the mold upside down. And then you can actually have a sliceable jalapeno olive cheese, which is really good and very flavorful and super healthy too. 
So, um, oh, and agar agar. If you if you look for agar agar in the health food stores, it's going to be really expensive. Like it'll cost like nine dollars for this small amount. But if you buy it at the little Asian markets, <laughs> you can find this probably for like four or five dollars. So, explore your little your little Asian markets and other things. So, then we have another uh, chocolate cream pie, and this one uses avocados as the base. And avocados are just such a great, rich, and creamy substance. And then you, when you add a little sweetener and a little cacao, some chocolate chips, it becomes a delicious, decadent, uh, wonderful pie. <laughs> and, and then you can do some wonderful decoration on top and have fun. One way to, to do some decoration is to this, this milk that I just made. You can take like a half a cup of cashews or even a cup of cashews and just cover it with water and just do the same thing that I did in the beginning. Make a really thick cream. And then you can take a Ziploc bag, put the cream in the Ziploc bag, and just, just make a little sm small, tiny clip of one of the corners at the end, and that can be your, your cake decorating thing. So you can decorate cake with that, which is fun. And avocados have about one-fifth of the vitamin E needed in a day in one serving. So they're rich in the good fats. So avocados are good for you. So it takes, you know, like a chocolate pie that's got milk in it, and it just really makes it super yummy and healthy. And now I'm going to share with you guys um, some divine cashew gravy. And this is one of my favorite, this is, this is my favorite gravy. And it's really easy to make. Um, oh, tonight I'm just giving you guys base recipes. So you can take these recipes home and play with them and work with them and create your own dishes and your own, your own beautiful creations. You can obviously add a lot more to these things but I wanted to keep it really simple. Like most of these recipes tonight have four ingredients, five ingredients, and that's it. So <laughs> super easy, super healthy, and organic and, and good for you. So the simple divine cashew gravy is really good. I actually, because I didn't really want to spend a lot of time up here blending. So this is just cashews and water uh, blended up into a, a milk. So you can kind of see the, it's like a thick cream is what it is. Now, this is more than the recipe calls for because I wanted to make enough for everybody to try tonight. And the ingredients in this one is just a little onion powder. Oh, actually, um, we are going to boil some water. Should I this one first? I'm going to boil some water and some onions and some celery. That's all that's going to be in this pot is water and onions and celery. So just keeping things super simple. So here's celery. <laughs> And then we're going to do the cream. So the cream is just, we would blend cashews and we would blend water together. And then we would add a little touch of onion powder and a little touch of salt and a little touch of pepper. That's all we're going to put in there. It's just onion powder, salt, and pepper. That's just the cashew milk with a little onion powder. And salt and pepper. And this is pepper. Put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm putting more than you would put because I'm doing a whole pot full. Now this can be turned into creamy soups. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I've had some people try to eat it like a soup because it's so good. <laughs> As a gravy, like, oh, this is a great soup. I'm like, that's a gravy. <laughs> so I'm going to put a little dash of salt in. <laughs> But yeah, this, you can turn, you can make any vegetable soup. So just create a regular vegetable soup. Onion, celery, potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, anything you want to put in there. And then you can blend a little of this cashew cream and stir it in there. And you'll have a, a super delicious, super creamy vegetable soup. Or you can use um, some organic canned tomatoes and blend those 
with this and create like a super creamy um, tomato soup, which is a, a really, you know, knock your socks off thing too. So this is like one of those things that it's, like, it's, it's, a, it's one of those secrets, <laughs> one of those yummy secrets. So we're just going to blend this. And then, so we're going to just move on to our next thing. So this is a living out organic apple pie. It has a crust uh, made from walnuts and oats. And the filling is organic apples and ginger and lemon and a little dash of agave. So there's four ingredients in the filling and there's four ingredients in the crust. Oats, walnuts, a little pinch of salt, and a little dash of agave. So, and... Lemon. Oh, lemon. Sorry, did I not say that? <laughs> so this, I'm going to teach you this crust, and this crust is kind of a universal crust. You can use it for any pies, chocolate cream pies, apple pies, fruit pies. It's like, it's like a graham cracker crust. So, and we have a food processor here. You can also do this, you could probably do it in a blender, just blending the nuts and blending, blending the oats. Like at first I make a oat uh, flour, like a fresh oat flour. And let's see, I think the recipe is two cups of oats and one cup of, I mean, three cups of walnuts. So we're going to start off just doing two cups of oats. Anyways, you make a flour out of the oats and until it becomes like a flour. It's like a, ho a homemade flour. And then you take the walnuts and you put the walnuts in there as well. And then you blend those, or you can put a pinch of salt in as well. So this turns into like a little bit of a, a savory flour. And then as that's blending, you take agave and you just drizzle it in on the top until the consistency uh, kind of becomes a little bit like wet sand that you could make a, build a sand castle with. So you just, something that sticks together with your fingers, yet it, it's kind of crumbly at the same time. So you don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry. And then you take, we take that and pat it into the, to the bottom of a pie plate. And then we would do our filling, which would be just organic apples, sliced, and put through here. Or you can also just take them and grate them. <laughs> now, all of the vitamins, pretty much all of the vitamins, are in the skin of apples. Of a lot of the fruits, actually. Lemons have a lot of their vitamins in the, in the skin. There's twice as much beta carotene in an apple skin as there is in the, in the filling, in the core of the apple, or in the center of the apple. So, yeah, one thing that I remember watching Dr. Greger give a speech, and I laughed because he held up this bottle of, of uh, lutein, which is, like, gets good for your eyes, and he's like, there's 200 mil 250 milligrams in each tablet of this lutein, you know? And then he holds up a, a leaf, you know, a collared leaf. He says, guess how many are in this? And it, there's 10,000 of lutein in one leaf. Of a, of a collared leaf of, of dark greens. So anyways, you know, your, your vitamins and your food and uh, it's, your health is in your food. We should, we should pay up front for our health instead of eating horribly and coming back and having to pay for it later. So that is definitely my mission is to show people that you can incorporate health and you can have good taste. You know, you don't have to eat cardboard. <laughs> you can eat really yummy tasting things. That can be super simple. There's, these things are super simple that I'm making tonight, and they don't take very much time either. So then you just grate the apples with the ginger. So I would just peel some ginger, pop it off, and take off the skin, and chop it up into, into little pieces. And I would put that, the ginger, just throw that in here, and have it all chopped up, and then I'd just um, blend it through there so it's shredded. And there would be a blade in there that would just be a shredding blade. So you'd come out with like, like shredded carrots, but it's shredded apple. And so it's shredded apple and ginger. And then once that's in the bowl, I would have that in a bowl. And then I would mix it, put in a little dash of agave. Now you don't even need any agave. So there's, you know, the, the apples are beautiful and wonderful and sweet in themselves. And I definitely encourage everybody to lower their sweet and lower their salt and just try to enjoy the foods as they are because there's, there's so many flavors in a bite of red cabbage in, a, in an apple and in, in the food as, 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 it, as it naturally is. One of the most amazing things that, that 
has happened to me in my evolution with food was when I decided to just say, okay, I'm going 100% raw, and I did this for a period of time, and I've done this for periods of time throughout my life. And the first time I did it was really amazing because all of a sudden I, I couldn't go to the flour, I couldn't get that tortilla, I couldn't, you know, do the things that I normally do. I said, okay, well, what am I going to do? And so I had to come up with these different creations. And it was amazing because all of a sudden in front of me, with, with my hands, and I'm working with all these colors and, and vibrant things, all of a sudden I have purples and oranges and reds and greens and just tastes and smells and the fresh herbs. And it was just like, even just working with the food just, just lit me up on the inside. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I started to like vibrate at a higher frequency from eating good, healthy food. I literally think there is some information that the earth has for us inside the food that we eat. And if we eat food that is connected to the earth in as much way uh, as we can, you know, even grazing, going out to the garden and grazing, that's home and, home and my favorite way to eat is just go out to the garden with, an, with avocado and just <laughs> take a collard leaf and take some parsley and take some basil and just make a little taco <laughs> right there. Go pick a, pick a corn cob and eat a corn cob. Cucumbers, I mean... That's, that's life, and that's, that's living, and that, it's like after doing that for a period of time, you feel so clean on the inside, you feel so alive on the inside, and you just, you feel like you want to give back to the earth, you want to give back to the world, and, and so preparing this food, I feel like I can't take credit for it, you know, I feel like, you know, God is my co-chef, you know, I feel like I'm just bowing to God and saying, okay, you know, this is to, to Mama Earth, you know, that's, that's why I put her name on the sign, you know, Mama Earth Cafe, it's not, it's not me, it's Mama Earth, you know, I'm just putting it together and giving it to you. One of my hints and tips is putting love into the food. I have made the same ingredients, the same recipe, and I have been stressed out and too rushed and too in a hurry, and, and it came out horrible. And then I made the same exact recipe in, in a good space, mellow, peaceful, blissful, singing a song, you know, and, and, and it comes out great. So I have learned that I need to make food in a, in a wonderful state of mind, in a peaceful state of mind, in a happy state of mind, in a blissful state of mind, and, and put as much love into the food as I possibly can. So that is my offering to the world and to people. And yeah, Mama Earth Cafe, there's so many benefits to a plant-based diet and lifestyle. So that's our motto. We're, we're healing people and the planet one bite at a time. So there's the apple pie, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with each of you. I usually just, what I do is I, I do the, the crust, which is just blending the oats, blending the walnuts with a pinch of salt, and then once that's a flour in there, drizzle the agave on top till it gets to the big, the crumble consistency, like a graham cracker crust. Pat out the crust, and then clean out the blender, so your crust is done. Uh, clean out the blender, chop up some organic apples, um, leave the skins on, Blend those through, just chop those through, along with... No lemon, no. Yeah, and so with ginger, though. You can chop up some ginger, too. So do the ginger and the apple through here. Now, one thing with the ginger, sometimes ginger has strings in it. So what I do is that the strings are, you know, lengthwise. They're going this. So what I do is I just peel it, and then I just make little slices, little moons out of it. And then I put it in here, and then it goes through and it gets, you know, so it's like nobody's left with a string <laughs> and just little tiny bites and a, a flavor of ginger, which is really delicious. One of my favorite combos is, is apple ginger. And so, yeah, just ginger and apples. That's it. Take that out, put it in a bowl and then I'll drizzle a little bit of lemon on top of that. Mainly just lem lemon is an antioxidant, so it keeps the, the apple from going brown which, as a matter of fact, today, <laughs> and I encourage everybody to play with their food, too. Um, lemon is a great, has vit vitamin C in my food and, and communicate with it, and, and I like to mix with my hands after they're really clean, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so then mix that together with your hands, and that's your filling right there. That's it. So you take that out, kind of shake it off a little bit because it, it might be a little wet, especially as you get to the bottom, and then pat that into your, into your pie crust and leave the juice on the bottom. You don't want to put the juice into the pie crust, but that's, you know, your juice. You have a little quarter cup of apple ginger juice, which you can just drink. It's just fresh and healthy and organic and nothing but good stuff. <laughs> nothing but good, healthy stuff. So then that's your apple pie. And then you can decorate it however you want. Just slice the apples really thin, make a decoration. Mint leaves are really good with the apple too. Every now and then you get a little bite of the mint leaves, which is another one of my secrets is that 
food has a symphony of, of flavors. There's a, there's a symphony of flavors in food, like, like just the almond milk. Okay, so I was telling you about one of my secrets which is trying to get the different tones, the different notes together in one, in one meal. But you don't necessarily want to blend them all up together. So like sometimes I'll make salads and I'll have a little, like, like salt is a deep note, whereas sweet is a high note. So you have the deep and then the sweet, and then you have everything in between. So like in a salad, you have like a cabbage salad, and you can put a little garlic in there. So you, have the, you start with the salt, right? So you put a little dash of salt in there, and maybe a little dash of the agave in there. Uh, or raisins is even better, just a few, a few ra- raisins sprinkled. And so you have the sweet, and then you gosh, fresh herbs. Fresh herbs. Good. Sounds good. I'll show you guys this, the salad. <laughs> have a massaged kale salad. So this is one of my favorite salads. It is called a massaged kale salad, speaking about putting love into the food. Um, I'm actually going to massage the salad so that by the time it gets to you, it will be very relaxed and peaceful <laughs> and refreshed. <laughs> so this is just kale. This is dark kale. Now, when you're working with kale, this is lacinato kale. So when you're working with this, one way, I mean, the spine in the center is, is thick and hard, so you don't really want to put that in with your salad. So one easy way to do it is just to take out the spine, which is kind of fun, too. So you just kind of grab the outside of the leaves and you just pull. So you can do the whole, you know, just do a whole bunch in a short amount of time. Just really simple and quick and easy. So you got the whole spine out and it's, and it's out of the way. So you're good. And these... Now this recipe, I didn't give you, but you should write down because this, this can be a really good dressing for any salad. It's simple and you can even put it on rice and it's really good. All it is is olive oil, umeboshi plum vinegar, and umeboshi plum vinegar, which is actually one of, one of my other secrets. <laughs> this is a vinegar that you can get at Down to Earth or our health food store. Oh, ume. Yeah, it's, it's written down on the recipe. It, this says just ume plum vinegar. So U-M-E plum vinegar. This in itself has many flavors. It has a sweetness and it has a saltiness and a tanginess. It's, it's just, I mean, you can just put this on salad and it, and it tastes really good. So today we're just going to, we have a little salad here. We are going to just drizzle a little olive oil on there. We are going to drizzle a little umeboshi plum vinegar. Actually, I'll put a little more bigger salad. And then we are going to sprinkle a little bit of nutritional yeast, which is fortified with B12. One of those good things. And that's it. And then, and we are going to massage. Oh, actually, we are going to put some fresh herbs in. Fresh herbs is definitely number, probably number one tip. Anything that you put fresh herbs in is going to be way better than if you didn't put any fresh herbs in. So yeah, this is dill and parsley and cilantro. So we have dill and parsley and cilantro. And then I'm just going to massage the salad. And it's different than tossing the salad. It's more firm. It's like kneading bread. And the reason why we do this is because there is more is your green salad. And again, this is a base recipe, so you can add whatever you want to this. You can, one of my favorite things, this is one of those salads that I was talking to you about. Sometimes I'll turn this into spring rolls and put this in with some raisins and some red cabbage and gosh, yummy, yummy things inside spring rolls, inside the rice wrappers and, and wrap those up and make them yummy. So anyways, it turns into massaged kale salad. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and if anybody has any questions, I'll be out there by serving the food. But some of the food did not get prepared. <laughs> I'm thinking there, there is a kitchen. Maybe I can go put it on high for a minute and cook the, cook the gravy so you guys can... Okay, yeah, that'd be great. And, massage. and then just massage it, yeah. Get friendly with your kale. <laughs> put, put the love in. <laughs>
Yeah, squeezing it, kind of kneading it, squeezing it. Kind of like a little kitten would its mom. <laughs> Does this vinegar itself break down? It's on, yeah. Um, she asked, does the vinegar itself break down the kale? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, okay. I think she's, she took it and put it in the... Yeah. Well, this was going to be for the gravy. I mean, I guess we can eat the gravy as is. We can try it out and see what happens. But we're cooking it too, so we can try for later and have some cooked gravy. Isn't that fun? <laughs> And so simple, yes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever massaged <laughs> So then this is, this is just baked Yukon gold potatoes and baked yeah. red potatoes, just plain. And so that's what I was going to do tonight, was just chop up some plain baked potatoes and pour the gravy on top of them. And all the gravy had in it, remember, was just in the, in the saute, or in the pot of water boiling, was just water and onions and celery. That's it, just water and onions and celery. And you fill, cover the, cover the onions and celery with water to, to just above them. Make a little quick cashew milk, which is just cashews and water. And then the only flavors that I have in here is onion powder and salt and pepper. That's it. Oh, to cook it, right, just leave it on high speed for a little while. Yeah, that would cook it. But it's, well, it's noisy and uh, yes. <laughs> And we wouldn't get the, the cooked onions and celery in there, which is really yummy. The celery kind of adds a Thanksgiving-y taste to it because, you know, the, the stuffing has the, the celery in there. So they are having fun over there, massaging kale. <laughs> I actually just toasted a few sesame seeds that we can put on top of, on top of the salad. So this is just toasted sesame seeds just in a, on a pan. Oh, the potatoes were for the gravy that is not we're happening. Gravy over yeah, we're just going to pour the gravy over the potatoes. So I was going to do that without the, I guess I can just do that. So this is the, the cashew gravy with just those few ingredients. And even though this is not cooked with the onions and celery as it should be, um, it is still delicious. So we will try that outside. And um, as soon as the other, the onions and gravy, I mean the onions and celery are cooked, then we'll add that to it and we have more potatoes for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is your quick, basic graham cracker crust. And so what we have in here right now is just two cups of uh, oats, of whole oats, organic oats. So we'll just go ahead and turn that into flour. Okay, so the oats now are like a flour. And then we will add three cups of walnuts and a pinch of salt. We have walnuts down here. We're gonna do three cups of walnuts and a little pinch of salt. A little pinch of salt. And then we're going to blend that again until it turns into uh, more like a flour. And then we are going to drizzle a little touch of agave on top. So now it's just like a flour. Now if you, if you kept it going, it would, the, the walnuts would break down a little bit more and they would get too broken down. You know, they would turn a little oily. So basically you just want it to be like a flour, like a crumbly, crumbly flour. And then we would take a little organic uh, blue agave, and while it's turning, drizzle it. Kind of see it getting a little crumblier, but it, does, it looks like it needs a little bit more. It looks like it's still too floury, like it's gonna fall apart, crumble apart. So we're gonna add a little touch more. And then you try it again. 
And that actually looks pretty good. Kind of pulls it. If it starts to get stuck on the side, you kind of pulse it a little bit so that it uh, loosens up with the sides a little bit. And I'll give you a little look-see of what that looks like. Everybody can kind of see. And then you can kind of see that if I pinch it together, it'll hold together, yet it can easily crumble apart too. So that's your perfect pie crust right there. And I think since this is like this, I'm going to just I'll leave this as is and put it in a little taster out there. You guys can just taste the pie crust as is. I would normally pass this around and let everybody taste it because it's, it's really good. You can eat it as, as its own thing, <laughs> as a little treat on its, on, by itself. So great. So then we did the massaged kale salad. We did the pie crust and the living ginger apple pie. We have the gravy just happily cooking over here. Let's just go through this, this, these recipes and see what else. Let's, let's see. So face boots, like avocado is really good for your face too and is actually a really good hair treatment. <laughs> so, so yeah, when you're, when you're making guacamole, there's a little extra uh, avocado inside the skin. Just put it on your face, you know. Have fun, play with your foods. I encourage you to play with your food. <laughs> okay, so the massaged kale salad. Yeah, fresh herbs is, is a tip, absolutely. Getting fresh herbs into as many things as you can. Oregano is one of the, the highest superfoods. It's got so many um, antioxidants and phytonutrients in it. It's just it's power packed with health. And it's like the, the parsley that you most of the time see as the, the little garnish on the plate. Eat that. You should eat a whole salad full of parsley. <laughs> That's good for you. <laughs> really good for you. Okay, then we have the simple green drinks. Yeah, simple green drinks. Ways, fun ways to get greens into your diet. Greens are so healthy for you. Dr. Greger says cruciferous veggies cut cancer risk in half. And that's like broccoli and kale and Brussels sprouts, yeah. Dark leafy veggies are the most powerful thing you can eat to fight and prevent cancer. Another quote from Michael Greger. So, oh, uh, he also says kale is the cheapest health insurance. <laughs> Eat your kale, eat your greens, get your greens. One fun way to, one fun way to get greens and anything you, know, you want is um, like you put um, parsley and kale into a, a smoothie for breakfast. You know, we often do that, you know, frozen bananas. Um, we like to put acai in our smoothies and greens, a handful of kale, a handful of parsley. Super, super good for you and nutritious and delicious as well. You won't believe how delicious it is. Whole foods, the nutrients are in the whole food. So as soon as we start to denature our food and, you know, take out the germ and cut it all apart, you know, it's not going to be as healthy for you as if you eat the whole food. So get your, get your food whole. Eat the whole foods, the brown rice and all that. All that. So, so green smoothies and simple green drinks. A green drink is really healthy and simple to make. I have, I have an example here. A handful of lacinato kale, a handful of parsley, one to one and a half, or one to, a half to one apple with the skin, and a half or, of lemon or lime, and you can just cut it in half and quarter it and just throw the whole thing in there because the, the nutrients are in the skin as well. So you want to leave that in there. And then you would um, take that green drink, so you'd blend all that in here, and then you would just pour it in here over a bowl or a cup or something and just strain out the, the fiber. You can also eat it with the fiber, but it's a lot nicer <laughs> without the fiber. <laughs> so I often strain it. Then it makes a really delicious, really healthy, refreshing drink. I think the gravy is actually going to be pretty gravy over here. So let's try it out. Um, it might not be quite as translucent and delicious tasting. I'm sure it'll be delicious tasting. It just won't be as soft and melt in your mouth as I, would, I was trying to get it. Oh, you can definitely, yeah, yeah, apples, bananas, you can make everything fresh. You can make absolutely everything fresh. It doesn't, do not have to put any frozen things in there. So yeah, you can do it both ways, absolutely. Okay, so then we have the, the onions and celery and water. That's all that that is, onions and celery water. And this in here is just the move over here because I'm standing in the way. I'm just going to bring this over here. Okay, so onions and celery and water. And then we have cashews, water, onion powder, salt, and pepper. Five ingredients. Cashews, water, onion powder, salt, and pepper. That's it. 
We're just going to pour some of that in here. Pour the whole thing in. And actually, I'll, I'll give you guys a little example. I should put it back on the stove, even though I feel like I'm too close over there. Um, you can see how watery it is at the moment. We're going to let it cook for a minute, and you can see, you'll be able to see how creamy it gets and how thick it gets. So right now, it's like a, it's like a thin nut milk, is what it looks like. So we're going to just let that cook for a little bit. And, oh, actually, in this gravy, one of the things, I gave you a really simple recipe of just a base gravy. But one thing that's really fun is to add fresh herbs. That's one of my, one of my tips. <laughs> add fresh herbs into everything that you can. And the fresh herbs are best added at the end um, because then you retain all the, all the good flavor. But you want to put them in enough so that they're not, still not hard, I guess. So this is just some fresh dill. I found some beautiful fresh dill at Down to Earth, um, vegetarian health food store. Thank you, Down to Earth, <laughs> by the way. Fresh dill is super, super good. So we're actually going to let this cook for a little bit and thicken up. And then, and then we're going to add the dill and just stir it in. And then in the meantime, maybe we should go get the food together. Well, so to wrap it up, um, Mama Earth Cafe and the Optimum Living Alliance. Our goal, our mission is to just spread as much love and health and make it e as easy as possible to, to heal the planet one bite at a time with good food, good organic food and goodness. <laughs> that wasn't a very good sum up, but lots of love. Put love in your cooking. I'm going blank, but anyways, <laughs> you're all beautiful. You're all wonderful. And thank you for coming and thank you for being here. And I hope you enjoy the food as, as prepared, as simply as it is. It is full of goodness and full of life and full of vitality and, and love. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke and Home, for that lovely song, and to Brooke for that delightful demonstration of all those tempting recipes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can hardly wait to taste the samples of uh, their dishes tonight. Thank you all for coming, too. And if you can, please help us by putting away the chairs now. And love to have you come out into the uh, courtyard now and enjoy some of those delicious foods for a little while. And have a safe return home tonight. Thank you. Aloha. Cancer's pretty scary. Heart attacks too. High blood pressure and cholesterol are bad for you. We can live in fear and worry that our dying day is near. Or melt away those silly threats and grin from ear to ear. We watch meat eating diseases, it surely seems like fate. Until we understand that they've all made the same mistake. Poisoning their bodies with things that don't belong. Which is why it's time to sing this very healthy song. There's never been a better time. You don't need any other reason to go vegan. Rainforests are disappearing, the ocean life too. Our topsoil is diminishing day by day. Fresh water is depleting, global warming is getting worse. Extinction is running rampant, now we feel like our own curse. Did you know? That the water to make one pound of chicken can bathe you for two months. One pound of pork four months and beef an entire year. We can spare ourselves and children from the cause of all this waste by switching to the habits that brighten every day. There's never been a better time. You don't need any other reason to go vegan. Children and grandchildren will thank you all so much For having the good sense to make a change And for showing them the importance of minding your own health And helping ensure the planet's health remains And for giving them an example with crystal clarity 
of sparing God's innocent children from a fate that need not be. You see, mutilation is ugly, murder is too. Being skinned alive is quite obscene. It's easy to let it happen if you don't have to see. You can pretend it doesn't matter because you don't hear their screams. Mothers crying for their babies, babies crying for their lives. It's a terrible crime to pay someone for someone else's life. And the saddest part is it's needless. Eating them does us no good. Which is why it's simply practical and easily understood. There's never been a better time. You don't need any other reason. There's never been a better place. It's easier than ever to begin. Go vegan. Go vegan. Go vegan. Go vegan. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944 8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org.